this shit wouldn't be possible. Like I told y'all, he built all this today. This shit was an empty room, and he built all this. The chairs, the wall, the DJ, the everything, the food. He just mopped. Put your hands together for my man Q, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He keep clapping to y'all. See him. You can tell they ain't been to a lot of graduations. You can tell. They struggling with this, they clapping shit. Y'all, it's a horrible family feud crowd. All right. So, um, we, you know what we can do too? Um, like, they might have some questions too. I don't, I don't know. They, they might have some stuff. So, anybody, any, anything that's on your mind y'all want to talk about before we get started? Anything? Anything bothering y'all? Anything besides what happened at your school? Anything else? <laughs> the, what is it? Sex trap. I did. That, that's deep. Yeah, I think what happened, it, it's been happening. I think people is just like ignoring it. And um, they're shining more light on it now. But before, I mean, you, you had that shit a lot. People, I, I, I don't know. I mean, y'all have an opinion on that? Like, girls getting snatched up and all. I heard a couple spots like up in the Northeast, they, that shit been, uh, some attempts that took place. Uh, some of y'all might be snatching. <laughs> I might see some snatches in here. Y'all got quiet. Wait a minute. Hold on. How you know? What color? What color is the car? No. Um, that is that is that is deep. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm, yeah, we're not supposed to be laughing about this. Don't do this to me, y'all. I, I, I'm drunk. I can just say I'm drunk. Then. Fuck it. I'm drunk. I'm laughing because I'm drunk. All right. So so, <laughs> so we we go. <laughs> I can't laugh. Q, you gotta ask the ask quick because I can't do this right now. I'm gonna just keep sitting and then y'all gonna talk. We good, we good. All right, bet. First of all, man, I just wanna thank all y'all for coming out. Real wreck. Y'all could be doing anything else. Y'all could have spent y'all money doing anything else, but instead, y'all here, man. But uh, please, please give a round of applause for my host, my, my guest, my DJ. My camera folks, my bartender, my dudes in the back of the kitchen. Oh man, you know I couldn't do all this by myself. And without y'all being in here, it'll still be an empty room. We'll just be in here drunk. <laughs> but um, like uh, like like Mel said, a lot of y'all y'all already know me. Y'all know what I do and all that. I don't know if all everybody seen the YouTube series Breaking Bread, which was also directed by my camera crew. Um, but that's that's pretty much what we're gonna do. You know, we're gonna break bread a little bit. Big O was the only one up here right now that was on the first season. And um, so he pretty much knows how this is gonna rock. Um, nothing is scripted, nothing is sugar coat, we're keeping it real. We're gonna chop it up a little bit, and then they're gonna take over the show and do their thing, man. So for, I also give a hand for all y'all just for coming out, man. I appreciate it. They all, they all pretty much, Mel introduced everybody. I'm a little tipsy too. I don't even drink like that. I took a couple sips, so I'm a little tipsy. You, you didn't make your own drink, did you? Cause you no, no, okay. I was not going through that. Good, not good. good. But um, yeah, I'm gonna, let's, let's chop it up with them a little bit. Um, so one thing that I know, right, everybody that do something, I don't care what it is you get into, it's a story behind it. You're doing it for a reason, you know what I mean? Something is motivating you to doing it or whatever the case is. And we got poets, Comedians up here, right? So nine times out of ten, the stories that they telling is coming from real life experiences. Am I lying? No, I mean it's real life experiences. So um, I'm, I'm gonna just add, starting with Tata, basically like, why why comedy? Like, what's behind, what, what's the motivation behind wanting to do that? Uh, the motivation behind comedy? Yeah. Well, why why you choose to do comedy? Was it stories that you wanted to tell, or you just got? I got. I've always been into. Um, Entertainment. I grew up as a dancer and a, um, an actor, just being like the goofy kid. I won, you know how those little awards. I won class clown. I won it most likely to succeed, but they didn't give me that one. Um, but no, I, like I grew up that kid doing that stuff. But I fell into comedy. Um, honestly, it was just like depression, and then I went to an open mic. And two years later, I mean, I'm doing paid shows all over. So two years. That's yeah. Great. But um, that's, yeah, that's nothing. That's two years. The story nothing. is funny. I mean, um, I was going through a breakup, and my father died around the same time. And my dad Jamaican, and his funeral was in Jamaica. 
and it was a Jamaican funeral. I don't know if you ever had somebody almost drop a nigga in the hole, and they're like, you know what I mean? It's ghosts going past and shit. I'm like, God damn, this is, I was like, oh shit, this is sad, nigga, is that a ghost? Like, you know, like, it was a wild situation. And then around that time, also, my boyfriend, we broke up. This nigga done moved on to a version and shit. So you ever said, you ever have a conversation with your pussy ladies? Like, you know, I, I'm like, sis, what's going on? Like a virgin? A virgin? I mean, but you know, I know she's sucking some dick though. You know what I mean? Ain't nobody 28 no virgin. Fuck out of here. But yeah, so all that went through my mind and I said, let me go to an open mic. And that was two years ago and now I'm here doing paid shows. Yeah. I love it, I love it, yeah. I love it. Big O, what's up, baby? My man, this is my guy, man. Big O, like I said, he was on season one, and um, we, we definitely chopped it up a little bit. But uh, Big O, let him know, man. What, what, why, why poetry? What made you want to start, you know, telling stories through that? So I feel like poetry, you know what I mean? I can express myself through that, touch the people, and understand my message. Yeah, so that's amazing. Y'all got a big old always lean back. Like he ain't, he, he, I don't know if he tipsy or not, he might be, but he always just lean back. Y'all think I be lean back. That, that's, that's, that's my God, man, super cool. But you always said you just wanted to be heard, though. Yeah, that's all I want to do, just be heard. My message is fine. Anybody at all, I did my job. Yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, appreciate it, appreciate it. Let's get it, Cole. Talk to me, man. This now, this my, now I haven't met Cole or Kim. I, we met once, you probably didn't remember me. Yes, you do a lot of shows and all that, but this is my first time meeting with them, so I definitely need to know what's the motivation behind, you know, your comedy and what you're doing out here, man, and, you know, why? Like, to be honest, bro, it started because I was ugly as shit. I was like, <laughs> I had dreadlocks, bro. I had dreadlocks. Did you ever see somebody with, like, with dreadlocks and they try to get it like tapered up in the front, like, like shaved up? It looked tough, right? But like my barber didn't know what he was doing and shit. He just like cut the first four rows of dreadlocks off and shit. So I just had like receding dreadlocks. So I had to be funny and shit. So I had to. Be Niggas was trying to come at me and shit, so. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny, guys. It is, it is. That's funny, man, because I, re I, re I remember, uh, damn, That's funny because it, we do remember people like that, like in school, that was just, they had to find a way to, it's tragic. To, 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 you know, to keep people laughing and all that. So that, that, that's funny, man, but the, the stories behind it, like, you know, we all got, I know everybody got stories behind their comedy, like, you ever, you ever be telling a story to him? You be like, no, but like, what I ain't gonna, like, I tell everybody that shit. You said, do I have a story that I don't like? Like, like you wouldn't tell. Like, I know sometimes y'all, y'all go through, like, you know, material that y'all write, or whatever, pre, pre meditate whatever the case is, right? But it gotta be a point in time where you was doing something, and you was like, no, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna joke about that. They don't, oh, yeah. they don't need to know about all that. The Cosby stuff, bro. You know, I was, I was hesitant on touching that. Yeah, I haven't touched. Uh, that's funny. Are we passing the mic? Oh yeah. Yeah, like abortion jokes. Like shit, I'm pro-choice, motherfucker. You know what I mean? And it's just <laughs> like I had a joke about like pop locking and going away into the uh, abortion clinic, but like you know. That's not a joke I want to tell all the time because right, right, right. it can rub people the wrong way. It can take people that have been through something traumatic like to a dark place. So it's some stuff I just keep within my circle of friends. <coughs> you know what I mean? And that's that. And, and now y'all know about the abortion joke. But um, here you go. <laughs> Kim, how you doing, Kim? Hi. First time meeting you as well. Sorry your drink took so long. But as you can see, like Mel said, I built all of this, then I had to play bartender for like 45 minutes.
and then people wanted food and I didn't know what to do. So you know, I was going to so we, we got to you. Um, so so yeah, what's the what's the motivation behind behind your poetry? I, I heard a little bit of uh, uh, your work on Instagram, and you say um, your, your your name is Kim and them. Now, but we all know that enough. That means you know he's pretty lyrical. So that that's yeah. Talk to us. So. Yeah, obviously, Kim Kami Eminem is lyrical. Uh, but the name actually didn't come from Eminem. It kind of just, it kind of just fell into place that way. And obviously, I like it makes sense because people know who Eminem is. But when I was younger, my cousin, my older cousin, used to call me Kim Eminem. And this was like way before there was an Eminem that we knew Eminem was going to exist. But now that he do exist, and I was looking for like something to call myself, I recall that he used to call me Kim and them, so I was like, I would use Kim and them, um, because I think that, you know, obviously people would, it's, yeah, it's dope, dope, dope. So that's why it's Kim and them. Um, I do have some friends that kind of be like, yeah, hey, me, for the culture though, but, uh, so I'm still grappling with it, but right now, it's Kim and them. So. Well, see, that's the thing, your Instagram name was different, so we had a little uh, technical we had technical issues with the flyers right now because you know she had you had I didn't know the you know, you use your Instagram name or your or your stage name. Okay. Why, why not just use the um, stage name as an Instagram name too? Well, like my stage name came way after Instagram. Oh, class. So oh, class. probably if you go on my Instagram page, you probably won't find a lot of poetry content on there. Right. You kind of got it. Dig for it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I did. So, I don't trust me. I had to scroll all the way down. Yeah. <laughs> so when I signed up for Instagram, obviously we all trying to look for a catchy Instagram thing. Um, I keep it moving with like basically the acronym of my name, K I M. So keep it moving. So that's why I chose that. But Kim and them didn't come until later, and at this point, uh, why change it? I like it. I like it. Appreciate it. Slap it up for y'all. We um we started a little late, so I ain't gonna sit up here and talk or talk your heads off. Can we Absolutely, we can um, we can take a couple minutes to add some um, huh? Who am I? I thought everybody in here knew who I was. That's why y'all here, right? She's not impressed. She's not impressed. Well, I mean, y'all 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 pretty much know what I do, man. I'm I'm, I'm basically. Uh, I'm Russell, I, I, I like to look at myself as like a Russell Simmons in the making. I can't tell you what I am. I can't tell you what I am. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm not a fashion designer. I'm not a party promoter. I'm not a comedian. I'm not a poet. I don't do, I, I don't, I don't do none of that. I really don't. I get y'all videos on Instagram every day talking some real ish. I only, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop playing some real shit. I know mom and dad know I curse all the time. <laughs> but um, I, I give y'all those videos. I did the YouTube series where I brought people up just like them, breaking bread with them. I'm bringing y'all an event right now where this is really not about me. I just wanted y'all to come have a good time. I know they all hot. So I'm gonna bring them to y'all. You understand what I'm saying? So as far as me, man, I'm, I'm just trying to find my lane, find my niche. Team Ghostly is the brand. Make your presence felt is the movement. And just like Def Jam was, you know what I'm saying? Def Jam had a damn video game. I might be working on that soon. <laughs> Real rap, I might be working on that soon. So um, I do, I do plenty of things, man. I don't even like to say I'm an entrepreneur. I'm just, I'm out here making my presence felt like the motto is, and, I, and I'm, I'm doing what I want to do. That's it. Cause I, I mean, ain't nobody stopping me but myself. At the end of the day, I wanted to do this. I had a lot of shit holding me back financially, personally, all that. I was about one month away from canceling it, but now look. Okay. So, so I thank y'all, I man. I thank everybody for coming out. I thank y'all for, for joining me and making, making, this is history. This is my first one, so this is history for me. You know what I'm saying? I know the, the price won't go up as the years go up, so we might as well enjoy them while we got them for cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it, man. stage when it was a BYOB because I was drinking <laughs> and I brought my own bottle. I mean, but that's when I struggled on stage. It like, was a BYOB. I brought my own bottle. I drunk my own bottle. And you know, I just skipped through 
to the next poem, then I went back to the first one and completed it. Right. You fucked yourself up, that's what you were saying. Exactly. Okay. 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 Um, this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello. Yeah, I struggled on stage. I had a Valentine's Day show. Everybody was coupled up and booed up up in there, and I had my titties out. So you know how bitches feel with a bitch all in front of her nigga like this, you know? And I get on stage, and that's my thing. I jump around, I'm smiling. I'm like, hey, y'all, what's up, fellas? So all the women was like, you know? And I, from that point on, I, that's when I learned. Um, when I first go on stage, I embrace the women first. Um, at all times, I talk to them first, you know what I mean? I don't even see your nigga, sis. I don't see them. I don't see them. You know, I, I be like that before I get into my jokes, because that was pretty hard, you know? And then they couldn't really let, like, I saw guys sneaking and laughing. You know, they didn't want to laugh too hard. Did you think this bitch that funny? You know, they, <laughs> you know? And uh, that was a struggle. That was my first time, like, bombing out there. <laughs> um, well, I'll just be honest, I feel like I struggle every time. Um, I still uh, often read from my phone, so you guys will see me read from my phone. Um, so every time I'm wondering how, how I'm delivering it. Uh, so I feel like every time I perform, there's always a slight struggle and um, nerves. So um, when I do perform, you guys you know, bear with me. Um, Tata, Tata is not from Philly originally neither. 
So what is the comedy scene like? Because you're, you're a Jersey girl. So what, I'm from Camden. It's about five minutes over the bridge. Oh, we, uh, we already know. That's like Fortnite. <laughs> that's Fortnite <laughs> right that's that's right over there. They just get a Let me just shoot you right as soon as you get off the bus. They're like, you're going to take these bullets. I really ain't talking. No, I'm First of all, I've only lived in Philly for a year, and I see And you done seen the bodies? Don't worry about them. I've been a all my life and see no They on display. I think I moved to West Philly. They were like, you niggas get shot every day. But y'all was like, what? Yeah, yeah. They just doing that to scare you. They not and it wasn't even at night. It was like, I, I, let me tell you something. The daytime murders. In the summertime, I was in AutoZone. It was a beautiful mm -hmm. sunny day. McDonald's was across the street. Niggas minding their business. I walk out the AutoZone. I see these two niggas leaning on my car. I walk up like, get the fuck off my car. But I saw he had the strap. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was back it off. You know what? You can have the car. It's cool. You know, and I ran inside the AutoZone. And yeah, he shot them right there. Um, and I don't. It, it was broad daylight, so shit like that happened. You know, I heard gunshots at 11.30 a.m. I came outside, so I think it did next to the park. Like, I'm like, wow, this is what they do. Yeah. <laughs> right around I'm like, maybe it's my area, but like, no, Camden, Camden, um, I'm from Camden and grew up in the surrounding areas too, Pennsylvania. So, um, which is like the next town over. But we grew up but coming to Philly to do stuff. But so y'all didn't, didn't really have a comedy scene for you to really... No, Flourish, not really. Know. It was just goofy people that hung out together for right, the most right. part. But like now, we just, we're starting to do more. Right. And I mean, Shout out to Garden in the building right here, Garden Briscoe. Okay. Look at you. That's my nigga. He from you know we from the same area. He puts together events too. So. Okay. But for the most part, you know, we come to Philly to do everything. Just about. Yeah. Yeah. And Cole, Cole is also from Jersey. Cole, how? What uh? What's the scene like? Where you from in Jersey? I came. South Jersey. South Jersey, okay. That's Jake. It's, it's very peaceful. It's peaceful. <laughs> so, what can I say? I say, so, for you though, like, there's no way, like, back at home that you could even, like, be involved in comedy if you, like, weren't doing Philly, right? Oh, yeah, no, bro. I got to come over to Bridge. You had to come over to Bridge for that. Yeah. All right. Kim and them, Kim and them, Kim and them, eight miles. Where did you where did you get your start here in the Philly hub? Like just trying out the, the poetry? Just words. Just words, right? Okay. That's where I, I met you at. And how were you received at first going to just Just Words is actually is somebody calling me? Oh. That scared me. That's like a little Netflix horror movie just now. I heard the door open. Um the uh, yes, I, so the um the the just Words open mic is actually the longest running open mic in Philly. That's like, what, 15 years or something, 16 years? Mm -hmm. So how were you received when you first gave Just Words? Uh, just Words is very encouraging. I guess that would be the reason why I keep coming back, why I kept coming back and also seeking other um, open mic uh, events. So everyone that I've encountered there for the most part was um, pretty dope and encouraging. Help me build like like a network of other poets to like hey like keep going keep showing up keep doing your thing so um, yeah it just works. Listen, um, one last question and then we will get to the show. Tell me where you think this can take you or what you want to do with this ultimately with your poetry. Um, well, you just pass the mic there. I mean, it's God's limit, I think, because I'm not, at this point, I'm not really uh, secluded to poetry. Um, it is my, my friend's love, and um, what I can want to continue doing moving forward, but I'm, I've also opened myself up to a lot of other things, um, fashion, crafting, um, cards, bodybuilders, like, you name it, I kind of just do a little bit of everything, and I've been just opening myself up to not Yeah. 
I hope this takes me far, bro. This I think we can. He's saying that me and him will text from time to time, like during the day, and um, this frustrations come through the text, the text messages. I, I know when you possess a talent, and, and I'm sure y'all two can speak for it too, and you're doing something that you know, you and you feel like you ain't supposed to be doing. You ain't supposed to be going to work, clocking in every day, helping somebody else get rich, and you're talented. You know what I'm saying? It's like you just put yourself in your own box by going to work every day, right? That's how you feel some days. So, yeah. I get you. I get you, bro. Yeah, bro, with, with daylight savings now, it's like, <laughs> it's dark at like 4 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I missed all. I'm talking to you about dark. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, I'm out there with daylight on every day. Bro, hold on. Time out. What's your route? What's your route? Uh, I will come and catch me. That's <laughs> <laughs> Hey, bro, that's what I'm saying. You want to make sure you get home every night and save That's all. Same question. What was the question? Now, so where, how far, what do you think you're going to do with this talent that you possess? Okay, okay. I feel like poetry, right next to like comedy and painting, is like the rawest form of expression. So I feel like. If it's a Maya Angelou, I could be a Michael Angelo. And, you know, wherever that take me, that's just the start of it, I feel like. And then you could go from there, whatever your platform is. Like, you can expand. What's so funny? Them <laughs> <laughs> drinks, them drinks you don't the same. Thank you. 